again from the David Lloyd Tennis Center where things are hotting up in the Cockney Tennis Classic. The latest addition in the series which gives thousands of our viewers a chance to play on television themselves if they're good enough. Tonight we'll discover which mixed doubles combinations will make it to the final. Will it be Mr. Real Ale and his fiance or the number one seeds? Will it be the big left-handed server and his pasta popping partner or the number two seeds from Hertfordshire? Well, the incentive for the champions is the Fiat Trophy, a cheque for £2,500 and a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to tackle the number one professional mixed doubles pairing in Britain, Joe Jury and Jeremy Bates, with a further £2,500 if they can upset the apple cart and actually beat them. I wonder if that's on. Sue Barker, do you think that pair could possibly be beaten? Well, um, I wouldn't put a lot of money on it. They are very, very good, and uh, they're still playing the circuit full-time, so they're really sharp. Now, your protégé, Sarah Bentley, and her partner were beaten by Andy Fife and Teresa Catlin, who are appearing tonight in the semi-final. Are they good enough, do you think, to go all the way, or is Andy really a, an out-of-condition county <laughs> player who shouldn't really be in a final? Well, Andy plays a lot of matches, so uh, he's used to um, playing. And obviously, he's played a lot with Teresa, and she's still playing the circuit, so she's very sharp. But obviously, against the number one seeds, you know, that's a very tall order. You'd have to favour the number one seeds. What about the number two seeds, Howard McGuinness and Mandy Bishop? Well, I've always said that there's very little between the number one and number two seeds. Um, they're both very evenly matched, and you'd have to favour them against Kevin Duick and Annie Slaughter, who are, again, mainly play club competition, whereas the other opposition plays uh, major tournaments. Well, let's just refresh our memories about the semi-final draw, shall we? And it's Kevin Duick and Annie Slaughter against the number two seeds Howard McGuinness and Mandy Bishop. And then the other semi-final features Andy Fife and Teresa Catlin against Peter Russell and Caroline Billingham. But we'll get underway with Duick and Slaughter against McGuinness and Mandy Bishop. Sue Barker's made her way to the commentary box now where she's joined by Simon Reid. Play. Howard McGuinness then to start us off in this first semi-final. 15, love. Nervous error there from uh, Howard McGuinness. Really should put away any high volley. Thirty, fifteen. And Howard's is not the uh, most powerful of serves, but it's usually pretty accurate. And that's usually good enough in doubles play. And a beautiful overhead from Annie Slaughter in that last point. Doesn't go for a lot, just perfect placement every time. It's quite obvious that Annie's tactics are to use the lob of Howard's serve, but at the moment hasn't quite found a range. Yes, good approach volley from Howard McGuinness. Game, Howard McGuinness and Mandy Bishop, first game. And the couple from the Broxbourne Club in Hertfordshire. The number two seeds take an early lead in this one set match. Finals will be the best of three sets, but one set here, if necessary, it will go to a tie break. Kevin Duick, who was in sparkling form in the quarter final, he and Annie Slaughter from the David Lloyd Club in Heston, beating the mother and son James and Sue Teubler from Tunbridge Wells in the quarter-final. Here's Kevin to serve. Love one down. Oh. 
Lab 15. I don't think Kevin expected such a easy volley there. Just rushed it a little bit, went for too much. But bound to be a little bit nervous in the early stages of this set. Oh. Well, he didn't read that one. Tremendous shot from Howard McGuinness. Lab 30. Here it is again. He looks almost embarrassed by it. <laughs> you can see how far out of court he was taken with that left-hander serve. Fifteen thirty. Really, it's going to be tough for Mandy to uh, make the returns because when Kevin gets that first serve in, it's very, very difficult to return. Thirty all. a bit as well. Yes, well, Mandy likes to, or well, she prefers to, stand in and chip the return and come into net, but not being allowed to. Yes, an emphatic service game from Kevin Dewick. Game, Kevin Dewick and Annie Slaughter. One game all. Mandy Bishop to serve. I think Annie's going to have to be ready at the net. I think they're going to direct the attack to her. Love 30. Super return from Kevin Dewitt. Yes, it was perfect placement, that return, right down the middle, at the feet of Mandy Bishop. Very, very difficult shot to return. Love, 40. And a fair lot. So here, three break points. Great chance now for the Heston pair. Fifteen forty. Well, a poor return there again, high, allowing Howard to hit a good volley, and they were always in trouble, always on the defensive. Turn from Annie Slaughter. And we might have an upset on our hands here. Game, Kevin Dewick and Annie Slaughter. They lead by two games to one. Against the number two seeds and some tremendous returning there, both from Kevin Dewick and uh, ultimately from Annie Slaughter. Yes, there always is a tremendous amount of pressure on the girl when they're serving because obviously when uh, you are serving to the man, it's uh, you, a lot of pressure on you to get a good first serve in and not allow them to attack. So uh, Mandy wasn't able to hold serve. Be interesting to see how Annie Slaughter can do on her service game. Getting a lot of advice from her partner. It really is uh, up to uh, the man at the net to try and intercept, try and cut Annie off the volleys and keep the rally short. Added pressure, of course, because Annie doesn't really like to serve volley, so it allows her opponents to attack and get into the net position. Whoa. 
That's what he's got to do. It's like lightning there at the net, Kevin Dewey. But if he's not making the interception, they're under severe pressure. thought it might happen. Here are two breakback points for Howard McGuinness and Mandy Bishop from Broxbourne. Oh, yeah. It's quite 30, a surprise. 40. Yes, not a lot of power on the surf, but again, perfect placement from Annie Slaughter. Still break point. Net. First service. Game. Game, McGuinness and Mandy Bishop. Two games all. So no doubt about their tactics. As we see that last point, how it able to attack the serve, and he having to play off the back foot, but a beautiful angle volley to finish on. She had no chance to run that one down. Only oh. just love. I think that's what she's got to try and do is she's been using the lob a lot and they've been landing a little short so I think she's going to have to hit out because she does have a powerful forehand. That's her favourite side. feel there for the angle and the whip top spin and how uh, McGuinness not able to control that once again the lob just too short I think uh, in mixed doubles you must try and direct the lob over the girl's head Beautiful shot. That was quite a get from Annie. 40, 15. Yes, good attacking tennis, but uh, Mandy Bishop, a very natural volleyer. Much happier at the net than at the back of the court. Oh! <laughs> Thought he'd done enough there. Bishop. And for once, and his forehand lets her down. Our McGuinness and Mandy Bishop lead by three games to two. And the number two seeds edge in front again. Howard won the Essex under 18, 21, and senior championships in 1981. And Kevin and Annie here. Annie, plenty of experience. Won the David Lloyd tournament last year at Heston. Kevin Jewett won the men's competition in 86 and 87. And has played with his father in the Kayam Cup for father and sons. Reached the semi-final last two years. So it's Kevin serving, 2-3 down. This is 
the sort of rally that everyone enjoys watching. The, the net rally. Very quick reactions from all players. Fifteen all. Gone off for a change of racket. Oh! It's good volleying from Kevin Dewey. Forty fifty. point again good volley from Annie and the put away from Kevin right in the corner here so the pattern continues three games apiece Mandy Bishop serving uh, good placement 15, it's quite a wise tactic from Mandy to serve that wide one to Annie Slaughter draw her out of court it gives Kevin just too much to cover Kevin and Annie think that was long. And indeed it is. The umpire's the lies for signal he was unsighted. And an overall there, double fault, so 15 all. 30, 15. Form. The 20 year old bank cashier from Amersham. It's really stirred up. Kevin Dewick moving in, trying to distract Mandy on her second serve. Just out. 30, 40. Some pretty powerful booming forehands from Annie Slaughter. And now, break point against Mandy Bishop. Yay. Another super return. Game, Kevin Drewick and Annie Slaughter. They lead by four games to three. And I don't want to get too sexist about this, Sue, but the, uh, the ladies just can't hold their serve. No, well, it's always very, very difficult in, uh, in mixed doubles to hold your serve, but I think, uh, Mandy, they're a little bit guilty of serving too many times to Kevin's forehand, which uh, really is a very good shot. Could maybe direct a few more down the middle to his backhand, and not give him the angle, or really allow him to attack. But, uh, yes, you're right, the girls aren't really serving that well. They're not getting a high enough percentage of first serves in and not really allowing their partners to do enough work. Let's see if Annie Slaughter can change the pattern here. Acknowledges the net cord. 15, love. Net. 
first service. reactions here from uh, Howard McGuinness in this rally. You see Kevin doing very well to hit that down the middle, but perfect judgment from Howard to win that point. Fifteen, thirty. Well, Annie's still trying to use the lob, but... Uh, they're still just a little bit too short, and she uh, continues to try to lob Howard McGuinness, which uh, really isn't the best tactic. Oh, what? That's mixed doubles at its best. 30 all. Shot of the match, this, eh? Yeah, lovely serve, though, from Annie, right into the corner, which allowed her partner to cover the net. Yes, I'm not really too sure how Mandy found this angle from her position there. Really did hook that one cross court. But it sets that break point. Game, Howard McGuinness, Mandy Bishop. Oh dear. So the pattern continues. Games all. Kevin Dewick and Annie Slaughter from Heston. Four games all with Howard McGuinness and Mandy Bishop from Broxbourne. He'll be back with us in a couple of minutes. This week... Welcome back to the David Lloyd Club at Rains Park. The semi-final in the Cockney Classic. Four games apiece. Love, 15. Well, that's a much better lob from Annie. Really, all she can do off this serve of Howard McGuinness, it really is catching her on the back foot. 15 all. But a lot of people view the lob as a very defensive shot, but it really is, can be quite attacking. She normally uses it so well. That's a good volley from Annie Slaughter, rightly applauded by Kevin. Thirty all. For the first time, break point on Howard McGuinness's serve. A very important point, this one. <laughs> Good call. Use. Very, very close. That uh, shot from Mandy Bishop just clipped the top of the net. A little bit lucky. Howard McGuinness. 
long. Yes. Full credit to Annie. Really had the ball cracked at her, but somehow got it back. McGuinness. Good play there from uh, Howard McGuinness, not allowing Kevin Jewick into that rally. Game, Howard McGuinness and Mandy Bishop. A really super approach from Howard McGuinness. Howard McGuinness and Mandy Bishop lead by five games to four. And Howard there showing the kind of form that made him an England international. Got into the third qualifying round in Wimbledon five years ago. Annie having to do a lot of defending in this rally, but eventually Howard hitting the smash for a winner. So here's Kevin Jewick, four five down, serving to stay in the match. Howard has to stand wide because returning a left handed serve, you've got to cover the wide one so that one down the middle really does catch them by surprise. Net. First service. Net. First service. And he having to make uh, several reaction volleys. We're holding up well until the last one. There's some pretty fierce tennis being played out there now. 40, 15. Kevin really mixing it up well that time going for that good wide serve that he has. And when he's serving like this, he must be thinking about that break point that they had in the last game. That really was a virtual match point. Yeah. So this is the best match of the tournament so far. Still locked. Absolutely level. Five apiece. Howard McGuinness and Mandy Bishop from Broxbourne. Kevin Dewick and Annie Slaughter from Heston. Mandy Bishop here. Scottish indoor champion a couple of years ago serving. 15 love. Well, neither girl has held serve in this set, so a lot of pressure now. Five all. Mandy must try and hold here. Very important for her on on this side, serving to the man that she does get a good first serve in, and hopefully not to Kevin's forehand. Thirty, love. I got away with it that time, was able to volley the return back and then not allow Kevin back into the point. So a good start in this game for Mandy. Oh, that could prove quite costly, the forehand that time letting him down. 
two points here for her to become the first lady to hold her serve in this match. A little tension creeping in there. I mean, he didn't have any spin on that second serve. Only just throwing that point away. So much at stake in this game. Yes. Another mistake that earlier on she was eliminating from her game. Well, she stands very wide when she's serving to Kevin, which really doesn't allow her to serve the one down the middle. So another chance now. Kevin looking for greater control on the volley than he had there. Yes. Once again, the serve going down the middle. I just wish she would stand a little bit closer to the centre of the court. Only really comes into play when you are playing a left-hander. And now break point for the Heston pair. Next. First service. Johnson, the umpire, deciding to play a let. So again, the overall. Yes. Still to the forehand, but a much better serve. Very deep. Oh man, Mandy hasn't really um, varied her serve much in, in this set. Seems to be serving to the forehand of both players. Advantage, Mandy Bishop. It's always good to have a little bit of variety, a little bit of surprise in your game. They really must be expecting it on their forehand side. See, she's standing just inside that uh, tram line. If she stood a bit closer to the centre, she'd have the angle down the middle. Anticipation from Howard McGuinness, and for the first time in the match, one of the ladies holds her serve. And that could be crucial. Six games to five, they lead. And when Annie Slaughter comes out, she'll be serving to stay in the match. She's not held her serve so far. And she must be distinctly nervous. What do you think the tactics will be, sir? Well, I think that Annie will stick to her favourite game, which is serving and staying back, and just uh, try and get a, a low enough return in not to give her opponents an easy volley. 15 If she keeps serving them as hard and as deep as that, she won't have to worry too much. But a lot of pressure on Kevin to try and keep the rally short to really move around at the net. That's a super backhand lob from Kevin. 30, love. Oh. <laughs> Unbelievable. 
single player. Anticipated well and then flung himself to the forehand. 40, love. Well, he crossed at the net here and knew that he'd left a lot of room down the side but was very, very quick to turn and play the volley. Well, that's quite a surprise. First time she's held a serve and she holds it to love. And so we're into the tie break. And that will give them a great deal of confidence going into this tie break. So the number two seeds have an awful lot still to do. Yeah, it's quite an amazing rally here. A short lob from Annie, a miss hit from Mandy. And then Howard with all the court, really just a little bit tentative with the smash. One, all. That really is an error you can't afford. You must get the ball in play. Bishop. Annie just a little bit late preparing for that volley. Couldn't control it. Three, two, McGuinness and Bishop. And that time Kevin just steering that ball down the line didn't hit it, and that's what drew it out. So Mandy's held serve, so now. It's 2-3, Annie must hold her two service points here. Net, first service. Just have a feeling that the girls really are going to hold the balance in this uh, tie break. Whoever plays the better. Yes, and there's one Four, of the services two, gone begging. McGuinness and Bishop. And at the change round. Number two seeds have that one break. Will it be enough? Well, Annie now will be serving to Mandy, who likes to stand in. She'll be looking to move into the net if Annie hits the serve short. Thank you. Beautiful Four, serve. Three, McGuinness and Bishop. It's still. One service break in front, and now McGuinness with his two. Oh, well played. Thought she was going down the line. Five, three, McGuinness and Bishop. And that really is a very, very difficult shot to play, that high backhand volley. Difficult to get any pace on it. Oh, that was lucky. And at such a crucial Six, point. Three, McGuinness and Bishop. 
But now three match points for the number two seeds from Broxbourne. Great serve. Doesn't seem to suffer with any nerves. Yes, that's enough. Howard McGuinness and Mandy Bishop justify their number two seedings. And they make their way through to the final. But a fine struggle put up by the Heston pair, Kevin Jurek and Annie Slaughter. But in the end, they go out on the tiebreak. Guinness and Bishop win by seven games to six. So the number two seeds have followed the expected course, I guess you could say, and reached the final. What do you think made the difference there? Very little, really. <laughs> I mean, seven six tiebreak. I mean, it's a net cord. We got a lucky net cord uh, that Annie couldn't quite pick up. So. Uh, not really, not a lot. Could have gone either way, couldn't it, Howard? Yeah, definitely. I mean, once we uh, go a break down in one set tennis, then you're under a bit of pressure. So we were struggling the moment we lost our serve. So. I must say, it was very nice enjoyable set. to watch. <laughs> and it seemed that both sets of you were relaxed and forgetting <laughs> about TV cameras by now. Well, I wasn't thinking of the cameras, but I certainly wasn't relaxed. I was, I was very nervous. I've never, I mean, I've played quite, quite a lot of tennis and quite a lot of good tennis, but I've never been as nervous as that. You're quite a fierce player, aren't you? Um, if you say so, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said before you like uh, returning the men's serve and giving yeah. them the old double-handed backhand yeah, there. You do, I think if the ball comes quicker, you have less time to think. I think if you think, then uh, you're in trouble. Well, certainly I am. So, well, uh, I think that applies to just about any sport, I doesn't it? So, anyway, yeah, so. all the best in the final. Congratulations to you. Let's just have a word, commiserate with the losers here. And right up until that tie-break, of course, in the middle of it, it really could have swung either way. Oh, yes, um... It was very close. They played well when it mattered. Did you feel you were losing it in the middle of that tie break at, uh, when, it, when it went from 4-3 down to 6-3, didn't it? Yes, yeah, we lost a grasp then. We shouldn't have let them get that far ahead, but... Why, why did you? I made too many mistakes. <laughs> is, that, is that the way you saw it? Uh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Some of your big booming serves were telling, weren't they? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, they were going in today. Yeah, the tie break they got away a little. But, uh, there have been so many breaks of serve. I mean, it still could have gone either way. It's six three down. So. You enjoyed, even though you lost. Yeah, it's great fun. It's been great a lovely fun. evening. Yes. Very nice. Play in front of cameras again. <laughs> well done. So the number two seeds, Howard McGuinness and Mandy Bishop, progress to the final. Can the number one seeds meet them? We'll find out in a moment. Well, after that eventful first semi-final, won by the second favourites, let's see if the next confrontation can live up to expectations. It features the tournament favourites, Peter Russell and Caroline Billingham, against Andy Fife and Teresa Catlin, who gave us such a good time in the quarter-finals. And we join it with Caroline Billingham to serve, 2-1 down, the first three games having all gone with service. Fifteen, love. Yes, and not for the first time, Teresa. Running 15, around her backhand, oh. really whacking that forehand across court. Yes, but it does allow her a much better angle when she plays the forehand from outside that tram line. Oh dear. 15, 30. Caroline really not getting in quick enough behind that serve. She was only just inside the baseline to play that volley. And that really isn't a very good idea. 30 all. So important in doubles to serve and get into net as quickly as possible to allow yourself an easier volley. The closer to the net you get, the easier the volley will be. Thirty, forty. 
So here, break point. And we've already seen the number two seeds under the severest pressure just coming through. Now the number one seeds with a problem. Super rally from all four players and Caroline showing that she's a lot happier on the baseline than at net. Advantage, Teresa Catlin. Second break point for the Gunnersby pair. break. This engaged couple from Gunnersbury. Teresa, the British number eight. Playing with her fiance, six years older at 26. Who's uh, told us before last week, of course, that he really fancies a beer before and certainly after the games. But he's not a bad player. 3-1 up. Shut. Well, although Teresa called uh, no and expected it to go out, I don't think it was really playable. Hit with tremendous pace. Thirty, fifteen. And Teresa really looking very sharp. A little disappointing in uh, their quarterfinal match. I don't think she really played her best tennis. 15. But really does look fired up for this one. No problem getting Andy fired up. He's really competitive. He loves to play uh, competition tennis. He's just played uh, county stuff for Middlesex, juniors, under 21s. Peter Russell, good put away there. These days, Andy has most of his excitement watching Teresa playing, but uh, really enjoying being in the arena himself. And they move ahead now to four games to one. Andy Fife and Teresa Catlin lead by four games to one. And they really are a useful combination and they're surprising the number one seeds. Yes, I think everyone expected uh, Peter Russell in Come competition.
30, love. Oh, what a fantastic point here. Eventually Andy just hitting the lob too high, catching the roof, and of course doesn't count. Love. And Andy really having trouble returning that serve. That one, a, a kicking serve, which goes up, bounces up so high, it was above shoulder height, and that's very, very difficult to return. And he does have great variety on the serve, Peter Russell. Another confident service game from Peter Russell. Yes, he really is serving well because he's not really using the hard serve a lot. He's making sure he's getting a good percentage of first serves in, putting in the kicking serve. And that's always a wise move in doubles. Protect your partner at the net. And here's an important service game now. 4-2 up. Teresa Catlin serving. If she wins this, they surely are through. 15, love. Caroline very disappointed with her form in this set. Only nothing working for her at the moment. It's a time when you rely on your partner to really try and boost your confidence. I really think that Peter should be talking a lot more to Caroline. She's uh, getting pretty depressed with her form at the moment, nothing working. And it's a time when she really needs to be encouraged and, and helped through this set. Yes, well played again for Peter. A little bit of self-defence there from Andy Fife. applauded by her fiance so here's an important point point for 5-2 for the gunners repair game and five volleys just a game away from the final now Andy Fife and Teresa Catlin lead by five games to two And the number one seeds look in real trouble. Plenty of energy and conversation between the Gunners Repair and it's very difficult to know how they're going to come back from this. Caroline served to come. And here come the Gunners Repair. And there must be real excitement now, particularly in Andy's head. Big moment for him. 2-5 down in the number one seeds. Fifteen, love. Peter Russell there apologising for hitting the ball so close to Teresa, but that's really what he has to do, is to cross at the net and hit the volleys hard. Net. 
First service. Because Caroline Billingham was a little disappointing in her last service game. So Peter having to work extra hard. Thirty, love. Better serving from Caroline. His family steeped in tennis. Miss Caroline's father represented North Ants for 30 years, her mother's a county player and a sister, member of the Oxford to Oxfordshire team, captain of the university, and a triple blue. Yeah. First service. The serve was really so slow, it asked to be murdered, and that's what it was. Thirty, forty. Just to raise fist to his fiance, and now we've got match point for Teresa Catlin and Andy Fife. Use. Well, she picked the right shot. She saw Peter Russell move and she played the right shot down the line, but uh, just mistimed it. Advantage to Lisa Kaplan. Well, the net court helped a lot. It's a perfect doubles point there. Good return and a good volley. Gives them second match point. Game seven, match. Yes, no wonder he jumps in the air. A really impressive performance. They came here unfancied. But now, after a fine victory in the quarterfinal against Mauricio and Bentley from Reigns Park, they've beaten the Andy number one Fife seeds, and Peter Catlin Russell and Caroline Billingham. And Andy Fife and Teresa Catlin go through to the final of the Cockney Classic, winning by six games to two. So, the surprise of the tournament so far, the number two seeds have made it to the final, but the number one seeds have been denied by Andy Fife here and Teresa Catlin. That was a tremendous performance from our point of view. How did you feel about it? I think I'm pretty satisfied with that one. That was a good one, that was. Yes, great. What, what was your, your pre-match uh, plan? Um, I just got to get the ball in. Because I'm obviously, I'm playing with the best lady in the competition, so I've got, I'm the one who's got to do the work. So the pressure was on you, was it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think the pressure's on Teresa because she's trying so hard for me as well. So it's, uh, it's both ways, but I know I'm, I'm obviously the weak link in the pair, but I hope I'm standing up to it at the moment. Is he, uh, is he doing himself down a bit here? Oh, definitely. He's, he's great to play with, especially when he gets his first serve in. <laughs> it makes my job an awful lot easier. It's all about nerves at this level as well, isn't it? And on a fast surface like this, you, you can't dither about. No, it's uh, who dares wins, especially on something as, as fast as this. And really, it's whoever gets to the net first. Well, you've beaten the number one seeds. Can you beat the number two seeds and win the championship? Well, we're going to give it a go. We've got nothing to lose now. I hope maybe we won't have too many chances to play on TV, so I better make it good. Any glasses of beer before, after or during? Well, I only had a half before this one, so I think <laughs> I'll go and have the other half now. <laughs> well, maybe there's a moral there somewhere anyway. Very well done. But what do you make of that? That was a bit of a turn-up for you. Yeah, I think for the, for the little amount of tennis that Andy plays, I thought he played very well. Thing, he calls himself an out-of-condition county player. Uh, yeah, he's pretty solid. He played pretty solidly there. And, uh, I think it would be an interesting final. I think it would be good, quite a good final. There was one brief moment, wasn't there, when you pulled back to 4-2, when you had a chance to get back into the match. Yeah, I think it was really a case of like holding my serve. It was obviously going to be whether they could hold my serve, but they both returned very well. 
Yeah. What do you think of this surface? How does it play? Um, it's jolly nice. It's quite quick, mm. but it's a very nice surface. Yeah. And you must be very disappointed not to be in the final. Well, obviously, yeah. But I mean, we were beaten by the better pair on the day. They played jolly well. Do you think they can go all the way? Can can they win it? Well, if they play like that. I'm sure they can. Yeah. You agree with that? Yeah, if they play like that, I think if Andy serves well, I think they've got quite a good chance. Yeah. Confirmation of the final then. It's Andy Fife and Teresa Catlin, the surprise package of this tournament so far, against the number two seeds Howard McGuinness and Mandy Bishop. How do you see it, Sue? Who's your money on? Well, you'd have to favour the number two seeds, but uh, obviously Teresa and Andy must uh, feel on top of the world. And when you're confident and you're the underdogs, that's often when the surprises happen. But I think the other two just have a little bit too much experience. They're very relaxed, though, uh, Andy and Teresa, mm -hmm. aren't they? They seem to be enjoying it, perhaps because they're playing above their station slightly. Yes, they are, and I think it was uh, important for them to have a very close quarterfinal. That often really sharpens you up to play your best tennis, whereas uh, Peter and Caroline really won very easily and probably weren't that sharp. So uh, it's full marks to Andy and Teresa. They played great, but um, again, you have to go with the experience uh, in, the big, uh, in the big matches. All right, we'll see. We've had a great semi-final. We've enjoyed this programme. Some good tennis, plenty of fun. Let's look ahead to the final next week. And, of course, the challenge match when the new champions will take on Joe Jury and Jeremy Bates. We look forward to that. From all of us for now, it's bye-bye. And that match next week will be at the slightly later time of 10 past 12. and welcome to the third and last programme of the Cockney Tennis Classic, the climax of this new competition, to be sure. For months now, mixed doubles partners all over the South have been battling it out for a place in our final. Seduced by the prospect of a cheque for £2,500 for the winner, by the glamour of playing on television, and not least by the chance of having a crack at the top players in Great Britain. Now that reward applies to all the Cockney Classic events in snooker, it's Steve Davis, Bowles, Tony Alcock, and darts, of course, the crafty Cockney, Eric Bristow. And true to that tradition, in tennis, it's Joe Dury and Jeremy Bates prepared to accept that challenge and put their reputations on the line. One lady who isn't putting her reputation on the line tonight, but is joining us again for commentary and observations, Sue Barker. Well, Sue, not an easy one to predict, but uh, who would you take? For the final? Well, I think you have to go with uh, the seeded pair, the number two seeded pair of Howard McGuinness and Mandy Bishop because they have played tennis at top level. They've both played international tennis um, for England. And uh, to, although Theresa Catlin has, her, her fiance Andy Fife hasn't. And I think that might be uh, the difference in a big match because although in club tennis that uh, you may get away with it when you when you get out on a big centre court like this that uh, maybe he might be just a little bit too nervous to, to handle it and perhaps a little bit unfit as he admits he is <laughs> but a lot of support for Andy and his uh, fiance because I think people can relate to them more can't they it's just happy-go-lucky partnership in a sense here to enjoy it yes and I think that often works you know when well, they obviously um, play quite a lot together. They, they've played a lot of club tennis uh, at Gunnersbury and, and have competed in a few tournaments, so they know each other's games, and that really does help. I don't think Howard and Mandy have played that much together, just uh, gone together in the club championships. So uh, I think when you know your partner so well that, that uh, it can really make the difference. So hopefully it will as far as Andy's concerned, but obviously the experience is with uh, the others, with Howard and uh, Mandy. Right, so you're not being daring, you're sticking with the seeded pair, we'll see. Time now to meet our four finalists and uh, learn a little more about them. Howard McGuinness and Mandy Bishop, the number two seeds, and I guess you'd have to say favourites now, because they're playing the unseeded Andy Fife and Teresa Catlin, who've delighted us all with some uh, marvellous play and a bit of fun as well. That's not to do you down, of course. Are you looking forward to this? Oh, yeah, it should be good, yeah. You like this fast service and you like the heavy stuff coming at you? Well, it should do, yeah, hopefully. You sound you're a bit modest. Well, I'm <laughs> modest, yes. <laughs> what, what, what about nerves when it comes to the final with quite a big audience here, not to mention the TV cameras? Well, if you sort of have a word halfway through, I'll tell you how I'm feeling, but uh, I don't know. I don't want to give any secrets, though. Yeah. 
What, what, is the <laughs> what is the game plan? I see you've got your little boy here with you. Is that, is that part of the tactics? Yeah, hopefully he'll play a major part in it here and come <laughs> to the crucial points. Where is he, in the crash or has mum got him? I think uh, he's probably be taken out by now. Your opponents, of course, have beaten the number one seeds already, so you obviously won't underestimate them. No, it's very impressed. They played very well. Now then, are you going to go all the way? Are you feeling in the right mood? Are you mean? Yeah, I'm mean. Yeah, I feel all right. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It should be good. I noticed in the semi-final you were noticeably uh, taciturn. Was that deliberate? I don't know. I just didn't get quite so, um, you know. I felt a bit more relaxed, I think. It helps to ease the pressure, otherwise you'll have me throwing rackets and things, so it's better if I talk, I think. You described yourself last week as a, an out-of-condition county player. Are you still out of condition? Um, yeah, the pressure that this keeps putting me under, I'm definitely out of, <laughs> out of condition, yes. You were paying tribute as well to your partner here and your fiancé, of course, Teresa, as, as the best lady player in the tournament. Is that the way you see it, modesty apart? Not at all. It's, uh, you know, it's teamwork out there and... Whoever communicates the best is, is going to do well. You have had a very good tournament, though. You've been serving well, haven't you? And your, your ground strokes have been very good as well. Yeah, you've, you've got to keep it tight, as well, especially over the one set. And uh, you've got to take the chances when they, when they come. The umpire for the final is John Ralph. And we join play with the score at two each, both ladies having dropped their opening serves. So it's Andy Five to serve to Mandy Bishop. Bishop's forehand holding up well then. Fifteen This match the best of three sets, unlike the semis and quarters. Lovely return. 15 and 30. Mandy really stepping in, taking that one early and got the desired result right at the feet of Andy Fife. So a chance here. Slightly mishit. Yes, but brave play from Teresa. She knew she had to uh, intercept off that return. The second serve of Andy Fife. She did the right thing, just slightly mistimed it. 40-30. And that good serve really does get them out of trouble at 15-30 and a second serve to Howard McGuinness. It did look a little dangerous for the Gunnersbury team. Oh. Juice. But little control on that backhand, and it's juice. Oh, what a play. I can't teach Howard McGuinness. An absolutely unbelievable pick up there from Howard McGuinness. Cannot afford to allow those chances to slip past. <laughs> Tremendous play. Advantage of 
Obviously Manny prefers the backhand there, but beautiful play from Howard, but again leaving just too much court. Yes, superb volley from the Dunnesbury team. Really secure under pressure. Catherine Lee by three games to two. Just if hardly happy with that game. And here's the point that clinched it. Yes, a bit of a short serve there from Andy, but he got away with it after a beautiful volley. Again, Teresa really in sparkling form at the moment. Came back in the rally, but Andy, when he gets a high volley like that, he really does punch it away. Very powerful player. So Howard McGuinness and Mandy <coughs> Bishop. 3-2 in front, plenty of support here for them. There's the wife, Sally, and baby Ben. So here's Howard, 3-2. Oh. Trailing by 3-2, serving to Andy Fife. For those viewers who are surprised that Andy is playing in the right court, that's because uh, he prefers playing forehands to backhands, and Teresa has really one of the best backhands in British women's tennis. <laughs> and Andy, I think he might have heard you there, cracking that backhand down the line. Well, he was uh, really out of position here, you see, behind the service line, and tremendous uh, drive volley to finish the point. <laughs> 15 and 30. <laughs> Saying well moved, yes, I think just a little slow to react to that short ball. See that Mandy was in constant doubt as to whether to go to that little stutter steps. Shall I, shan't I? In the end, she made the wrong decision. Two break points. 13. Control there. Deuce. But fine serving from Howard McGuinness to get himself out of trouble. Yes, but in a way, I think that Howard really should have played that shot because it was on his forehand side. Oh. And here's a big point. They lead by three games to two. And here, second break point. Oh, that's desperately unlucky. Super return. And then the net court against them, but fine finish. It's a perfect return there, and Teresa's doing very well to reach that one. But Howard, very quick at the net, and he does react well. Advantage, And that time, Andy not getting it on his favourite forehand. Just hits his backhand a little bit late. And full credit to Howard McGuinness. Yes, he had to work very hard in that point. Finishing off with a beautiful high backhand volley. So the final getting off to a cracking start. And the Gunners prepare here, pushing them all the way.
15 at low. Well, an easy volley there for Andy, set up by that tremendous serve from Teresa. Really has improved with every match she's played in this tournament. Pretty brave. Second serve going for the centre. Felt a little lucky there that that one hit the top of the net. Going straight for him. Well, it didn't come off that time, but that was the perfect doubles point from Howard McGuinness. Chip return low and then moving in for the high volley. Only just out. Game 95-3 Yes, the Gunnersby pair in front. 95 and Teresa Catlin lead by four games to three. 4-3 the lead, and Mandy Bishop's serve to come. And they must feel quite confident because they really uh, are playing better at the moment, better than uh, Howard and Mandy. They're just a lot unlucky not to break Howard's serve. They must feel as though they are the better pair at the moment. There's a lot of pressure now on Mandy to hold serve. Pressure increased, of course, by the prize. Fiat Trophy, two and a half thousand pounds and another two and a half thousand pounds if they can beat the former Wimbledon Mixed Doubles champions, Jeremy Bates and Joe Jerry. And they're playing the American tandem. Why do you think they're doing that, Sue? Well, they're obviously trying to do it to stop um, Andy hitting those fierce forehands cross-court, which have been worrying Mandy. But it can often up unsettle the server, as it did there. Fifteen. That's the only criticism, really, I'd have in, in uh, Mandy's serve, is that uh, she doesn't really get enough serves into the backhand. Overhead, Howard McGuinness. 34. Well, a very delicate little chip there from Teresa Catlin that really caused all sorts of problems for Mandy Bishop. So this really is an important point. Good return from Andy there. 
Yeah, showing us that he can uh, hit the one down the line equally as well as he can cross court. Really is causing them some problems. Break point then, and a chance for Kathleen and Fife from Gunnersbury to take a 5 3 lead. Andy put her off, Five moving towards three. the centre line there. Whatever it was, maybe the pressure of the situation or the movement in front of her. That's the uh, situation now. Five games to three. And what a great chance now for this unseeded pair from Gunnersbury. 5-3 up, serving for the first set. 15 long. And if Andy can continue to serve uh, with that pace, they'll do it quite easily. Well, Andy may say that he's unfit, but he got into net very, very quickly behind that second serve, which allowed him to play that easier volley. Really is looking very sharp. Change of rackets for Howard McGuinness. Just out. Mm, a costly error, that one. 30 love. Really needed to put the pressure on there. Couldn't really afford to miss that volley. just starting to creep into his game. And again, good returning from Mandy Bishop. Break back point now. Right back in it now, and in emphatic fashion. McGuinness is served to come. This is how they finished it off. Well, this is the, the point that uh, gave them the break point where Andy missed that uh, chip across court, just tried to hit it rather than just chip it. And you can always, always a tendency to overplay that one. Time. They must be a little dispirited. Yes, they really have uh, thrown away a lot of chances. Break points on Howard McGuinness's serve, and then I, I do think that they lost that last game when Teresa missed that uh, relatively easy volley at 30-love. Makes such a difference serving at 40-love rather than 30-15. Just psychologically helps you. Howard McGuinness serving to stay in this first set. And the heavy top spin on that shot from uh, Teresa made it very difficult for Mandy to time that ball well. Thirty-fifteen. Very good judgment there from McGuinness. That was only just over the baseline.
14-15. And again, the judgment good. And Howard McGuinness, whose serve has been under pressure once or twice in the tournament, but I don't think ever broken. Looking pretty good again. Okay, Howard McGuinness trying to visit. And how different it was two games ago. Five games all. They've come back remarkably well. And now it's Theresa Catlin, ranked number eight in Great Britain. To serve at five apiece. Fifteen love. Beautiful play from Theresa there. Good serve and then a perfectly played half volley. One other point, I don't think Mandy Bishop expected such a good return. smiling at uh, Teresa's tactics, following in a very hopeful shot. Fifteen thirty. They can't afford to carry on making the mistakes. They've been in a winning position in this first set and now are staring a losing position. Thirty all. It's good play there from Teresa. She's been serving mostly to uh, Howard's forehand, but that time on the big point, mixing it up, serving to the backhand and winning the point. 30-40. Well, uh, it wasn't as easy as it looked, that one. It was dipping. It was below the height of the net. It wasn't an easy volley. Break point. Yes, the return had too much on it. And it's three games in a row now for the number two seeds. Howard McGuinness and Mandy Bishop lead by six games to five. But I don't think Theresa can really blame herself for losing that service game. It was just the beautiful returns of serve from uh, Howard and Mandy that won it. Under pressure, they came up with their best tennis. So here's Mandy Bishop. The 25-year-old from Hertfordshire, Scottish indoor champion two years ago. Andy Bishop to serve now for this first set. Love 15. Well, Teresa shouted yours, but Andy wasn't making a move for it. He was convinced it was going to bounce long, and he was correct. So once again, they're not going to let Andy hit that cross-court forehand. But when they've done this, Mandy really hasn't served at her best. Let's do something, he says. His form has improved throughout this tournament. Suddenly it's taking a bit of a dip at an important time. I 
I think that was tension there because uh, on both serves the ball toss was just a little bit too far back and that's normally due to nerves. It just affects the left arm. Very difficult to get the ball in the right place. Well, they deserve that. That was an unbelievable get from Howard McGuinness. And if Theresa Catlin lost her concentration, it's hardly surprising. Watch this coming up. He has a tremendous point and a great pick up there. I don't think he really knew where it was, but he kept himself in the point and then Theresa really with an easy put away just rushed it and went for too much. So, set point for Mandy Bishop and Howard McGuinness. Game, first set, Howard McGuinness and Mandy Bishop. And terrific play. Four games in a row they win. And, Mandy and Howard McGuinness and Mandy Bishop from five. Broxbourne take the first set, seven games to five. Welcome back to the final of the very first Cockney Tennis Classic. The first set then to McGuinness and Bishop. Can Andy Fife and Theresa Catlin level it in the second? As we go back to Sue Barker and Simon Reid, the unseeded pair are in trouble, trailing 4-2, with Fife twice dropping his serve. Dangerous tactic there by Theresa, trying to distract uh, Howard McGuinness from this easy volley. See here she runs in, trying to distract him, but lucky to get away with him without being hit there. And they need all the luck that's going. Well, it was the right shot from Howard McGuinness to play the topspin lob because Teresa had committed herself in close to the net. But he just went for too much. Well, that was a brave second serve from Teresa. Really went for it, landed deep, good enough to win the point. She's a very experienced international player, so you would expect her to deal well in these situations. Cheers. It's played on the major circuit for a few years. Very difficult player to beat. play from McGuinness. Advantage Howard McGuinness. And here's a point for 5-2. Yes, I think Andy felt that he should have uh, crossed off the return, helped his partner out. Hey. 
second service. And a rare, wild shot. Well, he was, wasn't really in the best position to play that shot. He had moved forward expecting a, a rather weak volley from Teresa, but she hit it very well. Caught him by surprise. Advantage, Howard McGuinness. Again, fine volleying from McGuinness, right down the middle. Second chance for 5 2. and Mandy Bishop lead by five games to two in the second set and by one set to love. And 5-2 the lead. And it's looking more and more likely that the number two seeds are going to go through. There are the Teublers. Sue and James beaten quarter finalists. Watching here as Mandy Bishop serves for the match. Fluency seems to have gone. Yes, just uh, his game's falling apart at, at the minute, just not being able to make the return, and he really should expect to make every return off Mandy's serve. No problem for Teresa, though. 15 all. That beautiful backhand of hers really never lets her down. Very well produced shot. And that was the perfect serve from Mandy, right into the backhand corner of Andy Fife. And that isn't his favourite shot. And the margins got more and more pronounced as the match has gone on. And here we have two match points, two championship points for Howard McGuinness and Mandy Bishop. First service. And there, fingers crossed from wife Sally, Howard's wife, watching now. Second service. It's out. Okay, and that's it. Out the Mandy Bishop. A reward for some highly consistent play throughout this tournament. And Howard McGuinness and Mandy Bishop win the 1989 Cockney Classic Tournament. Beating Teresa Catlin and Andy Fife, 7-5, 6-2, and take two and a half thousand pounds. So in the end, a giant killing didn't quite materialise. A straight sets victory for the number two seeds, Mandy Bishop and Howard McGuinness. Let's now introduce the marketing director of Fiat, Giorgio Pavia, to make the presentations. Little controversial moment 
in the second set there, wasn't it, with a net cord call. Uh, Andy went and lost his serve after that. Do you see that as a, an important moment? Um, to be honest, Tony, I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> you were so uh, carried away by the uh, occasion. Uh, yes, probably that's the nicest way to put it, yeah. Um, Holding serve wasn't the easiest thing, was it? Well, not if you don't get the serve in court, no. It tends to make it a little bit tricky, so... Uh, you weren't at your best, you didn't feel? Not on the, uh, not on the serving, no. That was, uh, it was, a, I think, the first couple of net calls, uh, and then there were a lot of people, I was very aware of the people coming in around the back. I never really got into a rhythm. Uh, and especially as it was tight, uh, and they were playing very well. Um, so. Uh, well, there you are. You're the champions. Two thousand five hundred pounds split between you evenly, I guess. What are you going to do with the money? Uh, probably have to buy all the people at Broxbourne a drink, but uh, nothing. Are there are that many, are there? Well, there's or they're that spot, thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Had? Uh, usual Swiss bank account, I expect. <laughs> I see your little boy Benjamin uh, trying to keep an eye on you with his uh, yeah. with your wife there. Was, that, was yeah. that an inspiration? I think he helped one point. I know Teresa was going to serve and I heard him call out. I hope that put her off a little bit. You heard bit. him call net, did you? <laughs> <laughs> well done anyway. Congratulations to you. Let's just move on to our gallant losers, as we said. Didn't quite work out in the end. Good stuff. Great fun. Sorry it ran out a bit, but uh, it, was, it was great fun. We've enjoyed it. You were enjoying, certainly, the quarterfinals and the semi-finals. Did you honestly enjoy the final as much? I enjoyed the final. It's a great atmosphere and there was a lot at stake, but I didn't perform quite as well as, as I would have liked, but we've had a good time. Did you feel you faded a little bit after that first set? Um, I suppose probably, yeah. They got very on top of it. They didn't miss a lot. Um, definitely the best pair we played, so that's, that's some comfort to us. They were really solid. It's good stuff. You knocked out the number one seeds, but couldn't quite overcome number two, but you were 5-3 up, weren't you, in that first set? Yep, we certainly were. What went wrong? I'm not too sure. You'd better ask the person who was serving <laughs> that question. <laughs> You've been so you, yes. You, well, you served very well in the semi-finals and the quarter-finals. Not quite so well in the final, did you? No, I, I tried to apply more pressure because I knew that uh, basically mixed doubles depends upon the, the ladies' serve, and uh, it had to be a good serve. Otherwise, Howard was going to give me a very difficult return. So I was trying to put a little bit more pace on the ball and a bit more spin, and that consequently. Uh, there to a few more errors. Now, you're the only couple in this tournament who play together and live together. What, what, what is it like? What are you going to do when you get home? Analyse the match or just think about the money? Um, well, just, I guess, forget about it and we just, you know, take the next match as it comes. We, we, as Sandy said, we've had a great time and uh, we've done a lot better than we could have hoped. Good, lovely. Well, I think you've made a few friends as well. A very good friend, Dave Collins, here tonight. He's 18 tomorrow, so I think I can go and buy him his first legal beer at midnight. <laughs> I thought we'd have to end on that note we'll somehow. To, yeah. Anyway, we'll very, very well done, all of you. Thank you very much indeed. A short breather for the champions, and when we come back, the moment of truth for them when they take on the best mixed doubles partnership in Britain. Could they possibly double their money? We'll see. Welcome back, and now the icing on the cake for our new champions, or is it? A chance to make a little bit of history for Mandy and Howard by taking on the number one professional mixed doubles pairing in Great Britain, Joe Jury and Jeremy Bates. Are you looking forward to this one, Joe? Because you've everything to lose and nothing to gain, I guess. Well, I have been watching a bit and they're used to the court now. So, uh, you know, only one set, it could be a bit dodgy. In, uh, in previous Cockney Classic events, you know, some of the uh, world number ones have been beaten, so it's not impossible. No, it's, uh, <laughs> well, no, nothing's impossible. We've got some opposition. We're not going to be taking it lightly, that's for sure. You were mixed doubles champions at Wimbledon two years ago. You're competing again this month, aren't you? Is it going well, the partnership? Well, we only play once a year at Wimbledon, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't really know. <laughs> but, uh, that can't be easy. No, it's not, but I mean, mixed doubles is fun, you know. It's a shame because the, the men's and the women's circuits aren't integrated, so, um, you know, we just don't get a chance to play. I mean, it's only Wimbledon and a couple other tournaments the whole year. I mean, I think otherwise a lot more people will be playing mix. So Not so long ago, you were in Finland, of course, with yep. Great Britain, yep. uh, doing rather well in the Davis Cup. Are you feeling at the top of your form? Yeah, the, the match in Finland was fantastic. It was, a, it was a real boost for us and, and for, the, for the men's tennis and everything. So, uh, and it was on indoor courts as well, so, you know. Joe, you've, you've been world number five at your best, haven't you? You've got to get back to that somehow. Well, um, 
that was in 1984, so it's been a few years since then. So You're not over the top, no, are you? No, of course I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Jeremy. <laughs> no, I, I hope to try and get back to that form, but of course, you know, tennis is a tough game nowadays. Yes, absolutely. Well, how do you fancy taking on the best players in Great Britain? Um, it'll you be... Look as if you don't mind. <laughs> no, I don't mind. It'll be fun. Um, and we've done the, the, uh, the important bit now. We can relax a little bit and enjoy it, hopefully. You could double your money and quadruple your prestige if you can beat them. Is, is it possible? Well, as Joe said, anything's possible over one set, so uh, we'll have a go. You're not going to be overawed, are you? Uh, hopefully not. I don't know. Again, I feel OK now, but uh, I felt OK before the, uh, before the final, but we'll have a go. Have a Here we go then. One set, the challenge match. Let's join Simon Reid and Sue Barker in the commentary box. And the best of luck to everyone. Well, it wasn't quite the best of luck for our Cockney champions, Howard McGuinness and Mandy Bishop. They've been struggling, as you can see. They've lost the first four games. Wait. Thank you. And here's Howard McGuinness to serve. Love four down. Love 15. Still making too many errors, Howard. It was a good serve. He got in quickly, but again, just rushed the volley. That's often what happens when uh, you get a little nervous playing a world-ranked pair. Just crept into the centre line. Yeah, she likes to take control, Mandy. Doesn't listen to the calls too well. 30, 15. Well, she's a very natural volleyer. She likes to be at net. That was a a poor return there from Joe, which allowed Mandy to attack the volley. And you can see how difficult it is to play um, really class players. Every return is tough. Every volley you have to make is always very difficult. Johnson being given a bit of a hard time here. And for once, a lack of understanding between Bates and Jury. 40, 30. And they can't go soft on these two. We saw it in the final of the Cockney Classic when they were 5 3 down and won the first set. playing a class player you actually strive that bit more the second serves are a bit long whereas you take it in a little bit easier against other players yes well you know you have to get a deep second serve in otherwise it's going to be attacked advantage McGuinness well it would be a real boost for them if they could uh, hold serve and get on the scoreboard be able to relax just a little bit more. Oh. Well played, Howard McGuinness. Changed direction so well then. and Bishop. Well, doing the Jerry right thing Bates here off that Jury very high return, going straight one. at Joe Dury. May not uh, seem very nice, but it is the right tactic in mixed doubles. You have to 
put the majority of the attack to the girl. Jeremy and Joe enjoying themselves here. Both of them got terrific doubles records. And Howard and Mandy will know that well. Joe, of course, semi-finalist herself in the US and French, but reached the semi-final in doubles at Wimbledon with Anne Hobbs in 83. Same year, she and Anne reached the semi-final of the French, and two years later, semi-final of the Australian. Jeremy, of course, won Wimbledon with Joe in 87, and last year with Peter Lundgren, runner-up in the Australian. So, no mean doubles players, these two. And Jeremy definitely took his eye off the ball there. And he's not happy. Placement from Jury. 15 all. They just seem to have just a little bit more time to play their shots and place them where they want. First service. Second service. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, how did she smile then? <laughs> Couldn't believe what she did. I think she'll remember that one for a long time. She was standing 15, inside the baseline to 30. play the, res the return. Perfectly played, really attacking shot. I think Howard and Mandy have decided to really give the ball a crack here. Well, that's the right tactic. They've got to have a go there. They can't outplay these two. They've really got to attack and try and hit the winners. Terrific return. And she's far from being overawed by Jeremy's serve. 40. She's giving it a bit of a pounding. She is. Well, she, throughout the tournament, she was chipping her return, and uh, it seems as though she's made up her mind that she's really going to hit through it, hit flat and hard, and it's paying off. Break point. First service. Very unlucky there. They played the point so well. Had the British champions on the run, but couldn't quite win the point. I think Joe's going to have to be uh, ready at the net. They're uh, hitting it pretty hard to her. And that's mainly due to the fact that Jeremy's just lost a little bit of rhythm on the serve. Advantage, Jeremy Bates. Jeremy hasn't really got enough first serves in in this game to uh, to win it easily. He's really had to struggle, come up with some very solid second serves. First service.
again, Jeremy Bates and Joe Jury. And I think Jeremy will be relieved to get that one under his belt. As you said, there's not a lot of rhythm in the serve there, but eventually he manages to hold on. Well, you can see he throws the ball a long way in front, which allows him to lean forward and get a good start into the net. Beautiful service action. So Mandy Bishop serving to stay in this set. One set match this. Fifteen love. Good deep serve from Mandy Bishop, setting that point up beautifully. It's always nice if your partner gets a good serve in, it allows you to hit an easy volley. Thirty, love. Useful volley from Mandy. Yeah, she's a very natural uh, volleyer, plays well. That surprised Jeremy there. Control. 40, love. Yeah, she really is looking very confident at the moment, as you see. Good first volley, and then she closes in tight on the net. Easy put away. Several of the world's top players would be happy to have volleys like that. Forty fifteen. Mm, just a little bit too much pace on that one. But she really is playing better and better as this set is going along. Mandy Jane Bishop. Mandy Bishop. Two games to five, they trail. And, and they've given a very good account of themselves. Yes, it seems as though uh, Mandy really enjoys having the ball hit a lot harder to her. She really is playing a lot better than she did throughout the tournament. So we see Howard McGuinness, uh, a very good low volley there, not an easy one. But, uh, I don't think Jeremy was expecting it to come back in his direction. But they still look confident. They would have been uh, used to these situations, playing international tennis throughout the world. And as you said, Simon, just excellent doubles players. Still hanging in there, but it doesn't look as if the pressure of the extra two and a half thousand has affected their play. They've performed admirably in this challenge match. But the class of opponent, obviously of a higher standard than they would ordinarily meet. Let's see how they do here with Joe Jury, the far end to serve for the match. Just a little lazy there, Jeremy. Fifteen all. Good serve, though, from Joe. Has changed her service action uh, slightly. Now, just takes the racket back very quickly behind her head, not a long swing like most players. Just up behind her head and then through the ball. Just shows that no matter how experienced you are, you still have to make changes in your game to improve. Thirty, fifteen. And that the ideal double serve. Now we had to get right into the net. Go 
14-15. So here two match points for Joe Jury and Jeremy Bates. Game, set and match. Jeremy Bates and Joe Jury. Yes, a convincing victory, a convincing margin. But Howard McGuinness and Mandy Bishop from Boxbourne gave a good account of themselves. The Cockney Classic champions will certainly have enjoyed this week, but they go down to Bates and Jury Bates by, and six, Jury games by to two. six games to two. So there we are, at least a chance for you to work on the routine and the partnership a bit, a chance you don't often get. No, we don't actually, so we could chat about a few things there, and we were quite relieved we broke the first service game actually, <laughs> tell you the truth. <laughs> Is it feeling good, the partnership? Feeling confident? Yeah, it, it's great. I, I, it's just, uh, you know, it's some fun and uh, it's very relaxed. I think sometimes you can get too uptight in these things and uh, I think we're pretty relaxed. So I mean, it's good. We've got some uh, looking forward to the Wimbledon. Yes, terrific. All right. What would you say is the major difference between county play and professional play? What, what do you notice? Uh, well, obviously, I mean, they hit the ball so much harder. Um, they're used to playing against people who hit the ball a lot harder, so it's uh, that much easier for them to to put us under pressure. What about you, Mandy? What is the major difference between their type of play and yours? Well, I think that, as Howard said, you know, they, they don't tend to miss much. Uh, and obviously everything is that bit uh, bit quicker. They see the ball, take it a little <coughs> bit further in front of them, it comes back to us that bit quicker. Uh, once we get into it, I mean, that's nice. It gives us less time to think, uh, which is sometimes good. Um, but obviously initially it's coming at us pretty quicker, uh, much quicker than we're used to. Good experience, though. You've learned a few things. Well, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a bit of fun, <laughs> if nothing else. Right, lovely. Well, Joe and Jeremy then confirming their international class, as well as saving the sponsors a few, Bob. Or should it be Lyra? Our best wishes to them at Wimbledon in a couple of weeks' time, while they'll be hoping to repeat their championship success of 1987. But this tournament belongs to our Cockney Classic champions of 1989, Mandy Bishop and Howard McGuinness of the Broxbourne Club in Hertfordshire, the first winners of this brand new tournament. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have over the last three weeks. For now, good night. Two points away. Forty fifteen. And again, McGinn is so efficient at the net. So two match points now for the Broxbourne pair. Game it's out, out, and they've done it. 7-5, 6-2, so the Cockney Classic champions are Howard McGuinness and Mandy Bishop.